Yesterday, semiconductor stocks were flying because the Senate is looking to pass a $52 billion CHIPS bill that will provide incentives and grants for U.S. semiconductor companies. And check out this headline. Senators are advancing a computer CHIPS bill. They don't know what's in it yet. You've got to love our politicians wanting to spend $52 billion of your taxpayer money and not even know where the money is going. To sum things up, we still have a worldwide semiconductor chip shortage and the Senate wants to pass a $52 billion bill to help U.S. chip manufacturers compete with China and boost domestic computer chip production. To me, this looks an awful lot like a $52 billion bailout, and even Bernie Sanders, who I rarely agree with, got this one right. Let's rebuild the U.S. microchip industry, not give it a $50 billion plus check. Bernie went on to say, this equates to corporate welfare with no strings attached to the highly profitable microchip industry. In 2021, Intel made nearly $20 billion in profits, and it has been estimated that the big five semiconductor companies would receive the lion share of this taxpayer handout. The irony is the semiconductor industry is very profitable, so why would we look at giving them $52 billion? I'm not here to debate politics, and right or wrong, I expect this bill will go through and that semiconductor stocks will benefit. And what I see is opportunity knocking. We have several profitable semiconductor stocks that are down almost 50% this year that are already selling at a discount, and they are about to get $52 billion of free money and incentives. The bill has not even been approved yet, and many of them jumped 5% yesterday just because they're talking about the bill. So today we're going to look at the top six U.S. semiconductor companies by market cap and see which ones would make the best long-term investment. All right, now it's time to grab a huge cup of coffee and hang on because this is not your normal stock channel. It's no secret that we're currently in a bear market and the U.S. could be heading towards a recession. The good news is the bear market has knocked a lot of stocks down to a more realistic price and I'm looking to buy long-term stocks. What am I looking for? Number one, I want to buy profitable companies and we can quickly see this by looking at the net income margin. And number two, I want to buy companies that are growing their revenues and we can see this by looking at the revenue growth forecast. If a company is growing these two items, then even if the stock price drops, the company, which is our underlying investment, is thriving and making more money. This gives the company the option for stock buybacks and making investments to grow the business and benefit long-term shareholders. I believe that a stock's price will eventually be a reflection of the stock's fundamentals, so let's take a look at those fundamentals right now. We're over at bsmodeanalysis.com where stock research is made easy and we've got over 30,000 U.S. and international stocks in all of these different countries. If you're interested, check it out. Now let's jump over to the side-by-side -side. and today we're going to be looking at the top U.S. semiconductor companies and it's based on market cap size. So our big boy here is NVIDIA, ticker NVDA. And down here we can see their market cap is $401 billion. We've got Broadcom, ticker AVGO. Qualcomm, ticker QCOM. Intel Corporation, they've been around forever. INTC, Texas Instruments, TXN, and Advanced Micro Devices, ticker AMD. If we scroll down just a little bit, we can take a look at the stock performance and the PE ratio. Generally speaking, the lower the better and our lowest on the day is Intel coming in at 6.4. Our highest on the day is Nvidia at 42.4. Now the beast mode analysis is broken down into sections and we'll start with the income statement and this tells us whether or not the companies are making money and on beast mode I highlight the two most important areas for each section with green being the second most important and blue being very important to me. So if we start on the operating margin we generally speaking want that to be 10% or higher for long term stock and our winner over here is Texas Instruments coming in at 49.91% but all of these guys are pretty strong. Our weakest on the day is actually AMD at 22% and that's still pretty good. Next up, we've got the net income margin. The higher, the better. Our winner here is, again, Texas Instruments. Very strong at 42.35%. Also looking really good is going to be NVIDIA at 36.23%, followed by QCOM at 26.94%, and then we've got AVGO Broadcom at 24.53%. Next up, let's take a look at the debt to equity ratio under capital ratios. And if you need to know what anything means, all you do is hover over that little I there and then there'll be a pop-up for you and it'll let you know exactly what that data point is all about. So the debt to equity ratio compares a company's total liabilities to its shareholder equity and can be used to evaluate how much leverage a company is using. Higher leverage ratios tend to indicate a company or stock with higher risk to shareholders. The result is the dollars of debt for every dollar of equity. Compare the ratio to other similar companies. So here, 
we've got a little cheat sheet. We've got a down arrow, which always tells us what we're looking for. So the lowest volume on this is AMD advanced micro devices at 0 0.09. So that's definitely the lowest one by quite a good margin as well. The balance sheet tells us whether or not the companies are financially stable, and I like to look at the tattle ratio, and this is where we compare the total assets to the total liabilities. Ideally, we like that number to come in at two or higher, and the way we get that is by dividing the total assets by the total liabilities, so we can see that NVIDIA is coming in at 2.51, ABGO at 1.49, and then our strongest one on the day over here at the right is Advanced Micro Devices at 2.52. So our two strongest ones, they're neck and neck with a great tattle ratio. The key performance metrics, they're all very insightful to a company's overall condition. You'll notice everything here is light blue, and that's because I think they're all very important. One of the things I love to look at is the revenue growth in the last year. Here we can see AMD is our winner at 68.32. Coming in at number two, we've got NVIDIA at 61.40%. Extremely strong. The free cash flow margin tells us there's enough money coming in to pay the bills and grow the business, a very important number. Our strongest one on the day here is AVGO at 48.54%. Also strong, we've got Texas Instruments at 34.31% and NVIDIA at 30.21%. Now the rule of 40, this is something that I like to look at, and this is a ratio that measures a company's combined growth rate and profit margin. Many venture capital and growth equity investors believe this ratio should exceed 40%, especially for software companies. And the rule of 40 was coined by software angel investor Brad Feld in a blog post in 2015. And the best way to sum up the rule of 40 is from Brad himself, and he says, so if you are growing at 20% sales, you should be generating a profit of 20%. If you were growing at 40%, you should be generating a 0% profit. If you were growing at 50%, you can lose 10%. If you were doing better than the 40% rule, that's awesome. So here we can see all of these companies are doing pretty well on the rule of 40. Actually, they're doing great. And our best one on the day is NVIDIA at 91.61%. Our second best over here is AMD at 87.31%. And remember, this was designed by an angel investor for growing companies. So to have this on an established company, company that is profitable is absolutely phenomenal. Next up, we've got our book value ratio. We can see everybody here is all about the same with one standout being Intel being the strongest at 0.58. And the last section we're going to look at today is under growth metrics and companies should be consistently growing their business. So if we start with a net income growth percentage, here we can see ABGO is the winner at 127.6%. And if we look at NVIDIA, they're coming in at 125.1%. And when you see these numbers, it really makes you wonder why is the Senate trying to pass a bill, basically a bailout for these guys when they are so profitable? It really makes you wonder. Then we can look at the rest of the numbers here. Qualcomm is pretty good at 74.0% and AMD is coming in at 27%. My top two picks today are NVIDIA and AMD, and let's take a quick look at tip ranks and the analyst estimates. My number two pick today is Advanced Micro Devices, ticker AMD, currently trading at $85.88, and the analyst rating consensus is a moderate buy, 26 ratings, we've got 19 buys, seven hold, and their analyst price target for the next 12 months is $128.74, giving it almost 50% of upside and the high price target is actually $200. I think that's a little bit much, but even this with 50% upside is looking really good. And one more thing I want to drop down and show you. Let's come down here to news and insights. And we've got these stocks could skyrocket if Congress funds this bill. And you've got all kinds of articles coming out because this is a really big bill that they're talking about right now. We covered it in today's video, but $52 billion to these already very profitable companies. So it's a good thing that we're looking at them. My number two pick is AMD. My number one pick is NVIDIA. They closed up 5.53% yesterday at $169.92. The analyst rating consensus is a strong buy, so they are more bullish on this stock than they are on AMD. We've got 30 ratings, 25 buys, 5 holds. The analyst average price target is $255.38, giving it just over 50% upside, and our high price target is $400. So this is one that I already own a lot of, and I'm looking at dollar cost average and buy some more of this one as well. Nobody knows when when the bear market will end, but historically the recoveries have been powerful and now is a great time to go bargain shopping for strong companies to hold for the long term. What are your favorite semiconductor stocks? And if you have any questions you want me to answer on Friday's Q&A, let me know in the comments down below. I really hope that you enjoyed today's video and if you want all of my trading alerts or to learn how to read charts, trade options, receive our hot stock watch list, or use my custom indicators, the links are in the description down below. Peace and I'll see you on the next video.